Hello, my name is Jim German, and welcome to today's episode of Dulimanjaro. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Milwaukee M18 2763 impact wrench. This is a half inch drive impact wrench, and Milwaukee claims it'll put out 1,100 foot pounds of torque. Now, we're not going to do a full review of this uh, impact wrench today. I'm just going to be looking at that nor torque number and see if this guy actually puts that out. 1,100 foot pounds is a ridiculous amount of torque. A one inch bolt like this, a grade eight bolt, this happens to only be a grade five bolt, a grade eight bolt should only be torqued to 770 foot pounds. So that's more than even a bolt this size should be torqued to. That much torque, if it was a static torque, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, would be enough to shear this bolt in half. And this is a huge bolt. So typically if I wanted to measure the torque on something, I'd use one of these. This is a nice half inch drive torque wrench. However, there's two problems trying to use this to measure the torque output of one of these guys. The first is that this torque wrench uh, only goes up to 150 foot-pounds. Now they make torque wrenches that go up over a thousand foot-pounds, however they'd have to be at least a one inch drive, maybe even an inch and a half drive, and they'd cost a couple thousand dollars. So instead, what I've done here is I've built my own. So what we have here is a one inch bar of steel with a square on the end of it that I can put in a nice one inch drive socket, and I've got it attached to a long two by four at the end of the 2x4, I can hook up a force gauge. With the force gauge there, I know how much force I'm putting on it, and since I know the distance from the bolt to that force gauge, I can figure out the torque that's going to be applied. However, there's a second problem. The next issue that we have to solve is how do we torque this down to around 1,000 foot-pounds of torque? So to do that, I've got a big inch and a half wrench mounted inside a 2x6 here that's then clamped down to my workbench. Hopefully that'll be sufficient to not twist the whole workbench when I'm trying to tighten it. We'll see how that goes. We may not, may not be able to get up to a thousand. So the setup I have here is an inch and a half wrench mounted inside a two by six here that's then clamped down to my workbench. I can then take this steel plate with the nut and the bolt on it, drop it in there, and then torque down this bolt. And hopefully, even with a thousand foot pounds, it's not gonna just twist my workbench. It may, we'll see, we may not be able to get up to a thousand foot pounds. So once I torque it down, I'm gonna take it in steps and we'll see if at each level, if the impact wrench can remove that. Here's my makeshift torque wrench. I've got a board, happens to be 79 inches long. At the end of it, I got this little clamp that I hook this force meter up to. When I pull the force meter, then however much force it is, I can multiply that times 79 inches, convert it to foot pounds, and that's the amount of torque that I've got to apply here. Now we're going to do 460 foot pounds. That works out to about 70 pounds on the scale. I torqued this up to 460 foot-pounds, which means it should take about 500 foot-pounds to take the bolt off. So let's take our makeshift torque wrench off, our socket, put on some safety glasses. Always a good idea when you're working with impact tools as some of this stuff can shatter. We've got a full charge there, and we've got it set on two, whatever that means. And let's see if this guy can get off. No problem. So now we'll step it up to about 750 foot-pounds, see if it can do that. Right, we're going to do about 680 foot-pounds, that works out to about 105 pounds on the scale. I got it torqued up to about 680 foot-pounds, meaning it's going to take about 750 foot-pounds to get it off. Now, I think that's about the limit of this setup. I may have to bolt the workbench down a little bit more. Uh, if I want to go any higher, I was starting to twist the workbench as I was torquing it. So let's see if we can get it off first. All right, well, you can see it was able to do it, but it took a lot of work. 
Um, I don't think there's any way this is going to get up to 1,100 foot-pounds, but still, 750 foot-pounds is quite impressive. Uh, that's probably also about the limit of this bolt. Much more than that, it's probably going to start to shear this bolt. The last thing I wanted to look at was the difference between static and dynamic torque. Now, static torque is a constant, continual pressure like we'd apply with a torque wrench. It's enough that a stress field will develop throughout the entire system of parts, all the way down the torque wrench, through the bolt, into the nut, into the other wrench, and into the workbench. Dynamic torque is much different. It's a short burst of energy that travels down the drive, into the socket, and through, and doesn't ever allow a full stress field to develop. That's important because if you calculate the amount of stress that would be on a half inch drive here, there isn't a steel around that would be able to take even 750 foot-pounds, let alone 1,100 foot-pounds, without shearing this right off. That's why when I was using the torque wrench, I needed to use a one-inch drive socket. If I were to try to torque the bolt to that level of torque with a half-inch drive, it would shear it right off. However, the impact wrench is able to put out you know, the 700, 800 foot-pounds of torque through a half-inch drive because it's not a static, continuous torque. So at the end of the day, this tool could only put out 750 foot-pounds. It's still an impressive amount from a cordless battery-powered tool. Um, there's lots of different reasons why this may not have been able to put out the same the amount of power it's rated for. The size of the bolt certainly has something to do with it. A smaller bolt means that that energy can be more concentrated. Um, there's probably less surface that the, the friction acts over. So all that stuff may play into account why Milwaukee says it's good for 1,100 foot-pounds, but here I was only able to get it to go to 750 foot-pounds. Thanks for watching. If you had any questions or concerns about my methodology, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, so I decided I'm going to give it a shot for 1,000 foot-pounds. Um, so that's going to work out to about 140 pounds on the meter here. I've also made a couple of arrangements. You'll see I've got a clamp here to pull on this instead of trying to pull it myself. Uh, I've also added another 2x4 here to stiffen this up. And I've clamped down my workbench a little, so hopefully that won't rotate. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully I can get up there. All right, so it's up to 145. Um, I'm a little concerned that it turned a little bit, so. So it got up to around 140 and it's relaxing a little bit. And then um, it's also moved an awful lot as I was going through, so I'm a little worried that I've yielded something, either my steel bar or the bolt itself is starting to, to yield. Uh, when I take it all apart, I'll see what, what was going on there. But it does look like we got to about 140, so that should work out to about 1,000 foot-pounds of torque on that bolt. Let's give it one more shot. I got it up to 1,000 foot-pounds. Let's see if we can untorque it with the wrench. She's not coming off. Thanks for watching.